Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm flying from Amritsar in India to Kathmandu in Nepal making this our Himalaya tour. Well, most of the Himalaya tour. We actually will hit Mount Everest in the next flight. But uh, for the most part we're gonna be doing Himalaya things and we're doing it in the Sepakat Jaguar which is a very nice plane, a freeware plane by Norin available on the xplane.org forums and has many liveries. I picked this one which is sort of nice. Unfortunately, it didn't have any liveries for the Indian Air Force, uh, even though the Indian Air Force does have some Sepakat Jaguars. And uh, yeah, it is sort of a hefty plane. It seems to take a lot of speed to get off the ground, at least in my experience. And you'll notice the, the back wheels, they just look sort of chunky right there. And uh, I've got the fuel flow in the upper left right now, and that's because I'm a little bit concerned about it. It's a sort of long flight, an hour and a half is about what I'm estimating and we will be trying to go fast you know it's an hour and a half uh, even if we are pushing the engines a bit so we'll see and uh, I think it'll be all right uh, I do want to keep an eye on that especially since I'm gonna be weaving about trying to look at this mountain that mountain I want to make sure that we have enough time uh, so yeah uh, I think this livery is inspired by I, oh I think the squadron was the Saints and that little icon is sort of from that series I think Anyway, uh, so we are continuing with the Apollo 12 audio in real time right now. We are in the midst of the anniversary of Apollo 12. I haven't posted a video in this series for a while, but the timing is good. And I'll try and get through the Apollo 12 audio bit uh, before they actually get back from, from the moon. They're on their way back right now. And then uh, we'll be on to the Apollo 13 commemoration. The 50th anniversary of that will be the next thing that we will commemorate by listening to the audio of. So anyway, here is Pete Conrad, Al Bean, and Dick Gordon, and the support crew of all the Capcoms and all, and PAOs on their way back from the moon, continuing where we left off from. Okay. Now I have had trou some trouble with this plane, and so we'll have to see if things go well. Get some throttle here. That music being type piped into the mission control center courtesy I'll, of Yankee Clipper. I cut the music out, so I hope you guys don't mind, but uh, even tiny little bits of music seem to get me in trouble with the YouTube things. So I would love to enjoy the music along with the host TLI music. The crew, but no such luck. Um, oh, this is the problem I had. Well, yeah, you might say that. See how I was tipping over? I was, oh, and also, it right really doesn't right want now. to get off the ground, you see. Oh, it's not too bad right now. 180 knots. I don't believe that should be its takeoff thing, but I'm not going to argue with it right now. I guess it but yeah, it wants to tip right over, now. and it really... I had a little bit of flap there, too, and still... Apollo 12. But anyway, to forward and we're off. I'm gonna need to hang a left here. Yeah, with that high takeoff speed, it does have a pretty high stall speed as well. I'm not sure it's supposed to, but that's how it is. We're gonna start off by heading towards Jundigar. And then we'll head into the mountains. I've got a sort of plan for the route. Apollo 12, Houston, could we have the readouts of the AGC and the antenna pitch and yaw angles? Now, I've got it on manually configured weather because the real world weather was giving okay, me bad clouds uh, every single time. And I sort of wanted to be able to see the mountains kind of thing. And the AGC, I'll give it to you in clock code for 12 o'clock. It's about uh, 145. In other words, I'd estimate about three quarters full scale. Roger, understand pitch minus 20, yaw 190 on AGC 45, or about three quarters scale. Thank you, Dick. Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, this discussion between Ed Gibson and Nick Gordon. 
We don't want to go All too high up for sightseeing reasons. Of course, the mountains uh, will eventually force us up a bit. Is concerned with the uh, high gain antenna test that's uh, still in progress. We're at uh, 216 hours, uh, 24 minutes. The interior's in the not bad. We presently show Apollo Pretty 12 good. at an altitude of 120,100. Even got a fuel indicator there if I was stuck Earth. in here. And with a velocity that, of 4,587 feet per second. Not too sure how it matches up with the pounds in the corner up there. I wish the the information in the upper left was a little bit more consistent because we've got fuel flow in gallons per hour and then they show the fuel quantity in pounds. I'd like it if they picked one or the other, frankly. 12, we'd like you to, uh, first of all, dial in a pitch of minus 60, yaw 240, and then on our call, switch the high gain antenna to manual mode and then to react, and we'll give you a call when you want. We want you to go to manual. <laughs> Even if I said it, I only put a light cloud cover. I wanted some clouds just for scenery sake. But even now, I I wonder about these clouds. I'm suspicious of them. Apollo 12. Okay, that's already way too high, I think. And then react. Plane can go pretty fast. It doesn't look like it. Okay, I mean. Manual. It's very unassuming, but it's actually a very fast plane. I'll have to check the actual speed on it. I mean, fast for an attack plane, I should specify. It's obviously not a air superiority fighter or anything, but... Apollo 12, would you again give us the readings of the AGC and antenna pitch and yaw? At sea level, it can go Mach 1.1. At altitude, at 36,000 feet, it can go Mach 1.6. So again, for a plane that's meant in an attack role, it's pretty good. Apollo 12, would you switch the high gain to narrow beam? And we'll give you a call in 30 seconds and ask you to read out the same quantities. Roger on the narrow beam. Admittedly, of course, it doesn't have the heft of uh, A10. Okay, and the uh, pitch looks like it's about... Uh, I think it's relatively similar in price, though. Which means it's fairly affordable. Not one of these fancy things. I think I'm a little bit too far north here. I do understand minus 12, 180, and AGC peaked and now at three quarter scale. Apollo 12, Houston, do you observe the antenna still oscillating? Well, string yet, but it's gone up by about 5, 6. And the antenna position angles are pitch minus 20 and yaw 190. Are you a copy picture? Uh, Minus 20 and you know, 190. And do you see any oscillations at all? Say in front of us is Jalandar. We actually uh, flew over it on the way to Amritsar, so we're sort of doubling back a little bit here. Apollo 12, Houston, could we have the uh, GDC angles? Dick, right now we're looking for the GDC angles. Uh, we're finished now with the high gain test. Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. And we'll give them to you uh, real quick here.
I think we've got a better GC on the, on the number one package than we have on the number two. It's Apollo Control Houston at 216 hours, uh, 33 minutes into the flight. The Apollo 12 uh, crew, uh, specifically Dick Gordon in this case. 5.8. Pitch is 6.7 and yaw is 6.1. Copy 5.8, 6.7 and 6.1. Six Very shortly, uh, Command Module Pilot Dick Gordon will be involved with uh, more star sighting navigation. Go now to I'm trying the, uh, to uh, judge my fuel flow. Attitude. If we go full we throttle, Peaks out Roll around 700 gallons per hour. But that's because of afterburners. Okay. And would you uh, be sure that you're trying to decide away from where I want that? I would like to go fast, but I'd also like to get there. So, balancing that out. The length of this flight. Apollo the Houston, distance uh, for this flight is Apollo 601 12, nautical miles. 19,733 nautical miles away from Earth. Velocity now 4,602 feet per second. The ferry range for this is uh, 1,027 nautical miles with full external tanks. I don't know if that's just one external tank or whether it can carry two more on the wing pylons. Well, Houston, would you give us S-band aux to off and tape recorder to off? But, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically pretty close. I mean, 600 I doesn't sound close to 1,000, but I don't think we're carrying as much fuel as the full ferry load is. This last call up uh, concluding the high gain antenna test. We're at 216 hours, uh, 37 minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. The combat range with external fuel is only 760 nautical miles, for instance. And, yeah, that's with external fuel. Come on, Houston, Apollo 12. 12, Houston, go ahead. Hey, what'd you learn from that high gain antenna test? Stand by, Dick. Houston. Go ahead. Okay, 12, we have a recommendation on uh, the use of that system without the filter. First of all, we recommend you continue to use the overboard line without the filter, and it's possible it may clog. If so, we'll have you uh, dump the waste water uh, down to some quantity, which we'll specify at that time. After that, you can install the interconnect line and use the system as before. The interconnect procedure you'll find on ECS 31. All right. And 12, one note on the storage configuration which you specified earlier. That configuration looks to be a good one from our standpoint. We would like to make sure we understand it uh, as you do. We understand you've got the surveyor parts bag, rocks and tools all in one large white bag. Uh, we definitely don't want to go too far down though. And again that's bag. a fuel thing. And between it and A4. Okay and that's between it and A4, A5. And that this bag is tied down. That's correct. Okay. Your lem gear is in A8. Not there right now, Ed. Okay, but that's where you plan to have it. That, that, that's right. <clears throat> okay, and lem gear is in A8. And Dick's okay, EGA my choice of cloud layers maybe not the best thing. <laughs> we'll see. That's correct. Gosh darn it. But there was okay, outright, like, smog or something. 
making stuff really hard to see yeah, what, what with the, uh, was on the uh, real world weather. That's ECS mail 31. We should ECS be approaching Chandigarh. Okay, got it, 31. And is this uh, dumping the wastewater through the hatch? Uh, negative, Dick. Stand by. I expect to be able to see it right past that cloud there. Let's see. It's Apollo Control Houston at... 12, uh, we understand what you're talking about, okay. I think I'm past this uh, yellowish, dryish area in front is uh, okay, the city. Uh, first procedure sort of laid out in a grid layout yeah, we understand. based on the map. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 216 hours, 54 minutes down to the flight. Apollo 12 presently at an altitude of 118,800. 170 nautical miles above the Earth. I'm traveling at a speed of 4,630 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston. Drip rates you got on package one were 3.7 degrees in all axes. Uh, we'll be sitting in this attitude here for uh, on the order of 45 minutes to an hour. Why don't we uh, go ahead and uh, take a look at package two in the same way as we did package one? Okay, so there's John DeGarren, that's okay, the city. And we're going to hang uh, left here. That's affirmative. Following a pass through the okay. foothills we see to our that's left. Yeah, and that's known as the Kalka Pass, here. based on, I guess, a town along the way. Okay, market. Uh, GC is aligned on uh, package 52. Probably going to go a little bit lower. Uh, package, number, package number two. This is Apollo Control Houston at 217 hours and six minutes now to the flight of Apollo 12. The Yankee Clipper is presently 118,334 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity now reading 4,648 feet per second. We're uh, somewhere more than 30 minutes away from the start of uh, our second set uh, of navigational star sightings that which will be performed by Dick Gordon on the Yankee Clipper. Meanwhile, since uh, the Apollo 12 spacecraft will remain in a, an attitude hold for this period of time, uh, that last message passed up by Ed Gibson uh, indicates that they will run a drift rate check on uh, the BMAG package, uh, BMAG standing for body mount and attitude gyros, one of uh, two packages in the uh, stabilization and con control system aboard Apollo 12. We're at uh, 217 hours, seven minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Well, the mountains are looking pretty good. I hope the clouds don't get too much in the way. And we're following this pass through the mountains up to uh, a city called Shimla. And that's sort of a unique city. Most of the time, like when we were flying through the Swiss Alps, we saw that the cities were like in the valleys. Shimla's right at the top. <laughs> so. Be sort of an interesting place. You can see 30, the pass sort of weaving to our left there, that road. Where it should be clear for the sightings and also our temperature. Might be will come hard to, to, like to see them. understand how steep and some of this stuff is without seeing the roads weaving around. 220 hours even. 
Now, the city of Shimla is a little bit hard to okay, figure know, out because it's on the top of all these peaks, but it's, it's got to be pretty spread out. That's affirmative, Dick, and you have the uh, attitudes for those on board. You can see some indication of like these buildings right at top of these peaks already. That's affirmative, Dick. That's what we're looking for. Okay, this should be our last one on the wastewater, isn't it, right? That's right. And right there in front of us is Shimla. Control Houston at 217 hours. Yeah, and Russ, unfortunately, uh, don't have a whole lot of the autogen buildings popping up, but you can see center. it's rather spread out Updating along this peak Dr. here, this ridge, I should say. Uh, for his navigational uh, start Just uh, a cluster of buildings all around here. Presently we Interesting show sort of thing. It's tough to make out how big Earth. it is, so I'll look Traveling up the population, the but I think it's pretty big. Feet per second. It's just this hard to figure out because the little buildings are so small. That's why the allergen isn't appearing on them because it doesn't realize that they're supposed to be buildings. Hello, Apollo 12, Houston. Okay, so now we have to turn south. Hello, Houston, Apollo 12. Or south or we're well, heading north you right can, now. Uh, go ahead and carry out a fuel cell O2 purge for two minutes at the present time. You won't have to do an H2 purge either now nor before re-entry. This ought to uh, group together all of the perturbations and will also will be the last of any dumps or purges that would be required by us. Uh, this will make one big happy Fido down here. One big happy yeah, Fido. Little, That's the uh, uh, flight dynamics officer. Just cut down on, uh, or eliminate anything else we'll require from you. And the reason he's going to be happy is okay, because uh, uh, he has to recalculate uh, every time they do one of those dumps their trajectory. Yeah, I mean, there's pretty fine tuned stuff as far as hitting the atmosphere, right? So. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 217 hours, 38 minutes down to the flight of Apollo 12. The Yankee Clipper uh, heading home, presently 116,885 nautical miles away from Earth. Traveling at a speed of uh, 4,697 uh, feet per second. Okay, that's a little bit steeper the than Apollo I was looking 12 for. Crew, uh, Actually, we'll be going down soon. Performing, uh, to our next target. Two items, a wastewater dump and a fuel cell purge. And as was described by Capcom at Gibson, uh, these should be the last of these kinds of activities uh, prior to return. So, uh, we, uh, oops. presently show uh, we're 26 hours, uh, 43 minutes away from time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, so it looks like Shimla in 2011 was at 170,000. I don't know how fast it grows given the unique landscape, but uh, it's probably more Apollo than that now. Houston. Elevation of Shimla, uh, about 7,500 like feet, to, uh, or 2,276 uh, meters. And we have an RCS consumables update. Are you running ready to copy? Next city we're going to hit is Dehradun, which is another very unique okay, city. Let me get the tab first. For a completely different reason. Okay, go ahead. Okay, GET 217 plus 30. RCS total 29. 31 
That's Charlie. And Dick on the P-23s, which you're doing at 217. Great. Before Somehow I managed to get the clouds in the way anyway. I just there. wanted some scenic clouds, like you know? Because mountains and clouds look good together. But that should be uh, about 0.7 magnitude brighter relative uh, than 204. You have the unit vectors for that uh, already, they were read up, or you could find them on page uh, 3188 on the flight plan. Okay, I already have them. Uh, it's probably interesting because I couldn't see star 125 before either. Okay, Dick, if you would, give it a try again this time, and if it won't work, we'll have another star ready for you. Mm. Okay, I'll be glad to. I'm tempted to get back into the weather settings to just turn the clouds off. Just for the sake of sightseeing. The Himalayas being dramatic as they are, I want to maximize the sightseeing possibilities. We'll see if uh, is near. get a good look at what I want to get a good look at at this point. We're obviously not in the higher areas yet. Okay, here, thank you. Oh, this is good, this is good. All right, uh, as Hello, long as the clouds Houston, cooperate uh, here. Results of your high gain you can sort of see we're headed back to uh, lower elevations, and in particular where the, up, the water sort of runs out of the Himalayas. You can see PV. all the, the sort of streams the flowing down. Onboard antenna does show the antenna would move and that's basically as it was the, the story of Derudun, if you will. The tentative um, conclusion is that since the antenna would operate in the wide, wide beam in React and a narrow uh, beam manual, it appears that the got a bit of the speech by a loss from the Capcom here, or a comparator circuitry in the narrow beam mode of the strip lines. The high gain antenna malfunction has been isolated to the high gain antenna RF area thereby eliminating the high gain antenna, electronic box, and S-band transponder. The problem appears to be associated with the dynamic... So this is the confluence of the, of the Yamuna River, which is one of the really big rivers around here. Uh, thank you. And that's what, what we're over right now. A whole bunch of tributaries flow into the Yamuna River, and then what uh, bits couldn't flow into the river, stream down on their own. There's actually a little uh, ridge of hills that block the way. So the river is forced into a gap between the hills. And that's to our right. And all these other streams do their own thing, ultimately ending up in one of the big rivers, of course. So that's the Yamuna River and all of its tributaries. We're now at uh, 116,142 nautical miles away from Earth, Apollo 12. And Apollo 12 shows a velocity of uh, 4,722 uh, feet per second at this time. This is Apollo Control, Houston. You can just sort of see the sheer amount of water flowing out here, of course. And again, uh, to our uh, right below us there is uh, one of the major tributaries to the Yamuna River. And we're headed towards Derudun. You can see the city in front of us and, uh, between the clouds right now. And Derudun is right between Stand the confluence the of the Yamuna up. River and the Ganges River. So pretty special city. It's going to take a little while to get a speech together on this one, Dick. <laughs> yeah, I had heard this a bit before. Yeah. He had that uh, complicated speech. It'll take to get a little while to get a uh, comparable speech to the last one together. Oh, don't worry about that. Just they're good, bad, or different, or usable. So we're right over the Yamuna River, and then there's the city, Derudun, and then in the front there is the tributary to the Ganges River. So Derudun just sits right between them. These huge confluences, all these rivers streaming out. 
pretty interesting place. Hello, Dick Houston. Hello. Dick, uh, the sightings themselves that you took were very good in terms of procedures and well, we could tell the accuracy. When you incorporated them into the state vector, however, we did see a raise in the vacuum perigee of about six miles. Okay. Population of Dera Dunes about 600,000. There's another city around here that you may have heard of uh, called Rishikesh, and that's on the Ganges River. So here's the Ganges River in front of, well, here's the tributaries to the Ganges River. You can sort of see it in front of us, the main flow. Okay. And we're headed uh, actually a little bit south of Rishikesh. Turn a little bit north here. Uh, head by onboard, uh, Perigee is uh, 23.2 miles. This is all basically Ganges stuff Copy, you have, uh, going on here. Miles. Everything to the west of there uh, is uh, Yamuna River uh, stuff, uh, and then to the east is Ganges River stuff. So thank you, Mario, of course. Roger. Dick, at this time, you can maneuver to the P-23 attitude and... Uh, First, however, we would like those drift check numbers. You can start those P-23s if it's uh, the atmosphere around the spacecraft looks sufficiently clear to take sightings. Okay. Yep, so this is the Ganges River and uh, this city is Rishikesh. Okay, uh, there 3.1, 7.0, and 8.3, roll pitching off. Thank you, Pete. That's three one, seven zero, and eight three. Not quite as special as Deradun, I feel, but it's okay. Don't know if we can still see that city in the background. Not this really. is Apollo Control, Houston. At two hundred eighteen hours eighteen minutes, uh, now to the flight of Apollo twelve. Uh, maybe. Apollo okay, twelve. Okay, so will now be we're heading north. Uh, shortly to. Which will uh, get us better mountains. To look at its attitude to perform the uh, navigational star sightings. Uh, this done by Dick Gordon, the uh, command module pilot. We presently show uh, Apollo 12 at an altitude of 115,085 nautical miles above the Earth and with a velocity uh, reading uh, 4,758 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. Houston. Go ahead. Your package two drift rates were on roll, 1.9, pitch 5.9, and yaw 6.8. We've been able to, we've calculated uh, your vacuum perigee using. We're your basically state headed towards the common point between the Indian, Nepalese, and, and Chinese border. Minus 6.63. Using our state vector, we get the value of plus 27 nautical miles and the angle of 6.01. Okay. And Pete, if you would, would you have um, Al check his leads on the EK EKG when convenient? We're not getting a valid EKG reading down here. I'm not sure he's alive. <laughs> he only comes out every once in a while for a meal. Oh, that sounds pretty alive. And we want to watch him too. Will you let me know what he's doing? More specifically, we're headed to the Nanda Devi National well, Park. Well, uh, okay, yeah. Go ahead. And hopefully we How's will see a mountain head? called Nanda Devi there. That would make sense. Stand by. My experience, the mountains in the Himalayas, my experience in flight sims. <laughs> Not in real life, I've never been there. But uh, they don't really announce themselves a whole lot. 
because they're nestled in the midst of a whole bunch of other really tall mountains. So we can't really Roger like that. spot Nandadi from this distance. It's not like Mount Fuji We've or got, anything. Uh, another star here. That's one five six, and you can find the, the tall mountains are all pretty obscure. Three, one, eight, eight on your flight plan. No, it, it's definitely like over to the left there. Maybe that tall peak there is not the deal. It's in the right direction. Affirmative. And Pete, we're still getting uh, some noisy readings from Al's EKG. If you would, uh, ask him to check them again. And if they appear uh, unchanged, or loose, then uh, we'd like them to go ahead and rebound them. It's with some trepidation that I'm okay, headed to... Okay, I just to checked that, and they seem to be okay to me. Is this the same kind of erratic reading you were just prior to going into the lamp? Or do you think it's something... Do you think it's a sensor power, or do you think it's something uh, connected power or something? Exactly the same. It looks to be exactly the same as we've noted before, and... We, we heard somebody shout problem. exactly the same there in the background. Clarification I don't really don't get a, those. It's a connection of the sensor to your skin as opposed to the other connector. But presumably people are shouting at the Capcom constantly <laughs> uh, so that he right. can relay the messages. Or talking through his loop, of course, because uh, he's got a connection to what they're saying. This is Apollo Control Houston at 218 hours, uh, 33 minutes, so now to the flight of Apollo 12. Earlier in that uh, conversation, you heard uh, Ed Gibson uh, compare uh, onboard and ground navigational readings uh, with Apollo 12. Looking at uh, the present track uh, being made uh, from the moon by Apollo 12, uh, Flight Director Pete Frank uh, has indicated uh, that it uh, will not be necessary to perform uh, mid-course correction number six. We uh, presently show Apollo 12 uh, traveling at a speed of 4,783 feet per second and presently at an altitude of 114,368 nautical miles. Less than uh, 4,000 nautical, nautical miles away now from that point of equal distance uh, between the Earth and Moon. That distance being Star. Nope. He Watch interrupted me, he got okay interrupted. Here. Okay, Dick, last one we have worked up down here is a 174, and you can find the state unit vectors for that on the same page. Actually, if that's not the Davy up there, that's pretty prominent. That distance being uh, 10,904 nautical miles. Uh, you heard uh, Dick Gordon. Uh, I don't know what 10,904 nautical miles is, but okay. Preparing uh, to begin. I didn't think it would be equidistant to Program anything, but okay. 23 uh, navigational uh, star sightings. We're at 218 Man, hours, uh, 35 minutes into the flight of Apollo 12, and this is Apollo Control Houston. So, as I was saying, uh, this is some trepidation that I'm headed to Kathmandu because. On a previous around the world flight with the SR-71, I crashed there due to an engine failure on the SR-71 combined Good with show, some Dick. rough runway stuff. Now, there's still some rough w runway stuff going on. Some uh, it's just not flattened properly. Uh, but I think one of the runways is safe, so I'll have to make sure to use that runway once we get there. I just took a look at my bio red harness. Sure enough, the very same sensor is dried out again. But well, you can sort of see there. why uh, sometimes and, uh, it's hard to spot the the key mountains. When you take a look at it here, the one to our right there, there okay um, from this vantage point, looks almost as tall as the main mountain around. It's just uh, okay, by depth perception and, uh, that we can see that that one in the background must be much taller. That's great, I'll press on. Not that this one's tiny, mind you. 
Go without uh, good Apollo reference for Control death. Houston, it's uh, that be was Al Bean reporting uh, that deceptive. he would be switching to a new biomedical harness. The happy surgeon in or Mission mountains Control can be at this obscured. time is Dr. John Ziegel Schmidt. We're at 218 hours of 41 minutes into the flight. This is Apollo Control, Houston. So let's see. Now my map has the mountains in uh, meters, and you'll be able to see feet from the difference between sea level and above, above ground level up in the upper left. So um, let's go to uh, these mountains around us about 6,300 meters. Roger, Dick, we have it. You can remain at that optics cal attitude till your next set of P-23s coming up in about one hour. Okay, fine. Thank you. There's some uh, 6,500, 6,600s. I think that, that one we passed back there like must have been more than that. We know about. But this here in front of us is Nanda Devi. Try and see. Unfortunately, I, I can only get that. the. We'll work on we'll pass it it's got. Shortly. It's a moving map, and I can only get the okay. heights if I zoom in quite a lot. So I can't get the height of Nanda Devi unless we get really close. Ah, oh, there it is. Seven thousand eight hundred and sixteen meters. This is Apollo Control, Houston. At and that should be more than twenty-four thousand feet. Of Apollo Twelve. The Yankee Clipper uh, presently at uh, 112,000. Quite satisfactory as far as textures are concerned. Nautical miles away Again, this is just freeware uh, ortho 4 XP textures. Feet per uh, the mesh is a little bit the iffy there center, with those bumps. Uh, we're now in the but process overall, of undergoing a change of bad. shift. You can terminate that B charge now. And we're headed towards Nepal now. Performance is a bit choppy, and I don't know why. Flight Director uh, Pete F Frank will soon be replaced by uh, Flight Director Jerry Griffin. The uh, capsule communicator like for it wants uh, to load in clouds, but I'm keeping it from doing it or something. Will I don't be, know. Will uh, be astronaut Jerry Carr. We're at uh, 219 hours, seven minutes in the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, could we have a readout of the battery manifold before you vent? Uh, here's the 1.2 and we're going to... We're going a bit slow. Let me pour it on a bit. Thank you. I did warn you right at the top, this was going to be a bit of a long Hello, flight. Houston. Bit of it Hello. due to zigzagging the around. The last set of P-23s moved us in the right direction. It looks as though our back, your vacuum perigee now is uh, 23.4 from using your onboard state vector and re-entry angle of minus 6.28. On the right so side, if I make sure to use all the fuel, at least our landing is, uh, velocity won't be quite as high as the takeoff was. And your onboard value. Okay. Yeah, that's really what is it doing. Uh, let's see what if I do that. This is Apollo Control smoother. at 219 hours, 25 minutes. Oh, no. Apollo 12 is 111,953 nautical miles. Uh, it seems to be Earth. better if I just turn this thing off, Velocity, to be honest. 4,868 feet per second. Spacecraft weight, 25,036 pounds. There's a row of uh, mountains here uh, Apollo, to our left Houston, uh, give us white called Ponchchuli. And right here, I think three. that probably means uh, something like five peaks. Uh, Punch is five. Yes, and I guess that these are the five. That one, that one, that one, Report that one. Watch. Maybe this one or 
can't quite figure out what the fifth the one counts as, Miami. but basically right these in row right here are the, oh, it's ten seven are now. the ones. And uh, I'm kind of waiting for the Rams and the Cowboys to get started a little later. Those are 6,300-ish meters each. Very good. The tallest one is 6,900. Let me see what it really translates as. This is Apollo Control at 219 hours, 47 minutes. We're about uh, 20 seconds away from the time that Apollo 12 will be equal distance from the moon and from the Earth. That time occurring at 219 hours, 47 minutes. Actually, five cooking seconds. Like, Mark. The well, I, that's just a theory. I guess they don't really know what... They, they know the five is something, but... Nautical miles. Not too sure what the truly Velocity part is. You know, old-timey names, not entirely sure where they come from. Okay, I want to make sure we don't accidentally Apollo cross 12, into China. Plan update. Unfortunate texture scenes here. Uh, China is basically to our uh, left there. That peak you can sort of see on the horizon is in China. Don't know what it's called because on the map the text is in Chinese. Go ahead. Okay, this is for your uh, P-23 at uh, 220. Uh, star number 161 is still good. Star number 174 is still good. And uh, 26 is still good for the third sighting. For the fourth sighting, uh, change your okay. star number to um, 31. This 3, 1, river valley here is the border between India and, and Nepal. Uh, and so we I are crossing over in Nepal, over to Nepal. The now in sighting. Nepal. Say again. Got this pretty okay. spectacular glacier thing going on here. Or, uh, sighting number five is Jupiter. That's still but I good. can't read the names uh, on those peaks. They're not that tall, actually. We've seven, gone down five, a bit. Near. And uh, here's the unit vectors for it. R1 is minus. I think the zero, moving map diner, doesn't actually eight, name any of the peaks seven, that are less than 6,000 meters. R2 is minus seven, niner, one, uh, six, three. And R3 is minus. One of the ones around here six, is 7,132, which nine is pretty good. Eight. I think it's the one we're right over. I don't know. Uh, for alternates, you have a 24 far and 236 north, or correction, near. And the unit vectors on 236 are as yeah, follows. Yeah, I think that was the one that we were right over. R1 is minus 4, 5, 0, 1, 0. R2 is minus 8, 9, 0, 7, 5. And R3 is minus 0, 6, 3, 1, 1. Over. Glacier. Okay, choppy. Jerry, I'm sorry. I'll let you now. I was looking up star 174. I thought I'd use that before and it was no good, but I, I did use it. We're headed okay. towards a place called Simica on the way to the Shea Foksundo National Park. Uh, but I really don't want to see that seam in the landscape, so let me just turn the camera this way. <laughs> Dick, uh, your magnitude on uh, star 31F is uh, 0 0.2, and the magnitude on uh, 236 near is 3.0. Okay, fine, understand. Thank you. Sorry, whenever I click out of the window and manipulate the map, uh, 
seems to slow down quite a lot. Apollo 12, Houston, that's Oilers 17, Miami 7. Good, go. That's the Houston Oilers, not the hockey team. <laughs> In case some Apollo hockey 12, fans got suddenly excited. 22, Miami 7 now. Uh, we got a field goal and a safety. There you go. Field. It's a dead giveaway. Very good. This is Apollo Control at 220 hours 22 minutes. Apollo 12's distance from Earth now, 109,270 nautical miles. Velocity, 4,964 feet per second. Houston, 12. 12, Houston, go. So Simicot is the site of an airport. I don't know how well we'll be able to spot it. I think it's in the valley. Which would you rather have me use? 24 or 236? Stand by a second. Thank you. They want to check your uh, unit vector again on star 75. They didn't see it come up in the last register. As best we can tell, you ought to be able to use 75. A bit of choppiness there, but... Uh, I can see the airport right there. You can see the runway. It's not in the valley, per se. It's actually on top of that plateau. Okay, stand by a second. I guess why not, if you can build it right there. So that's Simicot. Seems like it'd be a nice place to land at some point, but not today. 12, Houston, uh, recommend you use uh, 24. Easier than Lukla. Okay. Let's see how... Look at that landscape, jeez. Uh, no. I know what that I am. That was Dick Gordon, who's uh, performing some details. onboard navigation. Doesn't really exercises. give the runway length. But 9,000 feet above sea level. Okay, that's all yours. Roger, 12. Uh, you should be going to the PTC attitude now. And I've got some procedures for you for photographing that hatch window contamination when you're ready to copy. Hatch window contamination. Hmm. Okay. Sounds like the start of some one of those space horror things. Go ahead, Jerry. Roger, Dick. Uh, the best way to take these photos is uh, with a sun incidence angle of about 45 degrees. And in PTC, uh, you'll get this angle when your roll is either 215 degrees or 290 degrees. And uh, the procedure to use is essentially the same as we did uh, on the way out, you know, when you took pictures of windows one and two. Uh, they need to have you clean the inside pane and then set your Hasselblad with the uh, 80 millimeter lens with black and white film and uh, take two photos at f-stop of 5.6 at 1 2 50th and a focus of three feet and then change your f-stop to f4 and uh, take two more photos over okay uh here 
I feel like I probably should have done a clean start on my computer oh, before probably. starting this flight. Uh, that or the trees are oh. way more lag inducing uh, than I think they ought to be. Going into PTC, there are a lot of trees down there, so I mean, the autogen is pretty Charlie intense. And it has produced uh, quite a lot of little trees, and, and we'll I don't know. But then again, when I look at the trees, it seems to have higher frame rate. And, uh, we'll leave it it off might just be the clouds, the TV and then get it up again. or this new uh, and just a reminder, exhaust the, effect, uh, the TV portion, mainly the clouds, like I think. Because when I turn it down like this, that's pretty. That, I mean, that's better than my tilt that way. We're afraid if you try to take a look at the Earth with the camera, you're liable to zap it in the sunlight. And uh, looking ahead to uh, 22130, we would like you to do that P-52 that's uh, planned on there. But uh, as things stand right now, it looks like there'll be no mid-course number six. And we'll probably do a mid-course number seven. Over. Okay, I understand. Good enough. And uh, has Dick got any comments on uh, the results of the last P-23? It looked pretty good down here. He says no. Okay. Good up here. Roger, final score on that ball game was Houston 32, Miami 7. Very good, Jerry. Thank you. No, something's causing it to lag even more. Well, this time turning uh, that on helped. All Go right. ahead, 12. See, you never know. Earlier they reported uh, we weren't going to do anything more. Uh, it took away a lot of the clouds, and that and seems to have helped. Skip this H2 purge here. That's affirmative, Pete. Okay. So those white peaks up front are probably at the heart of the Shea Fuxundo National this Park, which we will be entering soon. Hours. I don't know if there's Yankee a particular Clipper mountain that's really special in it. 452 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,031 feet per second. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, you can start your PTC. Okay. The Apollo 12, wiki yes. description of it says that the Fuxundo Lake is the park's right. prominent feature. Uh, Pete, uh, we've just it's at an elevation of 11,850 feet. Uh, we'll come to find out we have a terrain masking problem on Goldstone, and the TV start and stop times that we've got for you right now are too early. No, what we'll it head towards down that. To is we can't start TV until 2:24:10. And with your concurrence, we'd like to run the TV show between 224.10 and 224.40. And that means uh, stopping your PTC at uh, 223.50, and I've got some uh, attitude angles and high gain angles for you. And so what you'll do is stay in PTC a little longer and uh, get all your pre-sleep checklist out of the way and have it all done so that we can run this TV uh, show. The uh, press conference that we got for you here and uh, then as soon as we're finished with that we can just shut her down and uh, you guys can head for the sack. Very good. That's fine with us. Okay, if you're ready we're to... Having a hard time you... These aren't especially tall mountains, 5,500 to 6,000 meters. Okay, uh, if you're ready to copy, I got your uh, your times and attitudes and everything for you. Okay, we're ready to copy. Okay, we're on page three dash one. Lots of glacial says, stuff Maneuver going to on TV though. attitude. Change two two three one five to uh, two two three five zero. And your roll is three four zero. Pitch two seven zero. Yaw zero. Your high gain angles are pitch plus one niner and yaw 270. And in this attitude, you'll have window number one looking at the Earth and window number five looking at the moon. 
And as I mentioned before, your TV then will now be from 22410 to 22440. And let's move this, uh, go ahead and get this pre-sleep checklist out and done early. And uh, we've got your, uh, the questions that I'll be reading up to you on this uh, press conference submitted by the Apollo 12 Press Corps. And uh, that's about it, Pete. Okay, very good. This is okay. Apollo uh, at I guess this is the folks on the lake. The new right start front here. for the TV pass. It's the only lake I see on the map. <laughs> so. 24 hours, 10 minutes. This process of elimination is 6:32 p.m. Central Standard Time. 6:32 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it will be a 30-minute. Uh, yeah, this is TV the Fuxundo Lake. This one. Present Apollo 12 there is 5,801 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,000. So on to our next national second. park, Annapurna Conservation Area. And there we are looking for a mountain called Anapurna. Twelve Houston, uh, affirmative. We got your torque and angles. Okay. I think Gordon's getting pretty fancy in PTC. Pretty slick. This is Apollo Control at 222 hours, 4 minutes. Apollo 12 is 104, 200, 104,273 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity has increased to 5,152 feet per second. This is Apollo Control at 222 hours, 9 minutes. We'll recap the television situation Sorry, for you. Sorry, I'm meandering a bit. I'm consulting the maps here. Television transmission has been delayed for 55 minutes from the scheduled time, originally scheduled for an elapsed time of 223 hours, 15 minutes. Now scheduled at 224 hours, 10 minutes. Uh, the reason for the delay is that uh, terrain features uh, near the Goldstone tracking station will mask out the signal at the uh, earlier scheduled time and we will not receive a uh, suitable signal uh, for television until uh, the 224 hour 10 minute mark that uh, is equivalent to 6.32 p.m. Central Standard Time. Apollo 12 now 104,015 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,162 feet per second. Houston Apollo 12, we're going to be working with our TV camera inside, so we're going to take out our S-Band FM transmitter group one circuit printer. Roger, 12. Now one of these peaks around here this is called Dalagiri. That's a hours, pretty prominent minutes. one, it's supposed to be. Apollo 12's distance. But it's right outside the Annapurna Conservation Area. I think it's the one to our right mile. there. Velocity 5,246 feet per second. Tough to really judge, though. Apollo 12, Houston. It might be further south. Go ahead, Houston. Roger. I don't w see anything else that would fit the bill. Go. 
Roger, the Rams uh, beat the Cowboys 24 to 23 in a real squeaker of a game that just finished. The Raiders uh, beat the Chiefs 27 to 24. And uh, Vikings 52, Steelers 14. That pretty well covers it for today with the uh, TV ball games. And you already know the score of the Euler Miami game. This is all pretty tall Pride, stuff, as you can you. tell from the okay, altitude right off to the left. But to just review with you the passing a range TV of 6,600 below us uh, there. In this particular little news conference and bit, uh, we need to get a read on this that, peak uh, here. Were submitted by newsmen right here at MSC. That's uh, the new staff that's been here covering the flight. Uh, most of the questions that are going to be read up to you. Uh, yes, this is Dalagiri, exactly and that's 8,167 meters. And they'll be in an order of priority specified by the news media. Okay. We're going to stop in about uh, oh, two, three minutes. And, uh, there's a river here, and up the river, go. there's a place called Jomson. Okay. And there's an airport there. So, if you're interested in touring this area, this is Apollo Control at 223 hours 50 land. minutes. Apollo 12 is now, now 98,927 miles. We're headed towards the Annapurna cluster, if you will. Velocity 5,364 feet per the second. The South Annapurna glacier area. And trying to get to the Annapurna sanctuary. Uh, Roger, on that high gain antenna, uh, you can go ahead and just go to react narrow beam and uh, let's wait and see what happens. If it uh, goes sour on us, we'll have to go manual. Okay, it's in react narrow beam now. Okay, and we're getting you five by right now. Okay. I always Apollo mistake which area is the point. Annapurna Sanctuary. There's a lot of these valleys Roger, here, and one of them is the right one. San Francisco, 38. San Diego, 45. Denver, 24. Could Detroit, be 16. this valley, but Green Bay, not. 10. Cleveland, 28. New York, 17. Baltimore, 24. Chicago, 21. I'm going to figure out the peak to our right here. It and seems like it's 8,091. Didn't copy that, Dick. Say again. There's a few interesting ones in there. That's affirmative. Now, there's another airport up ahead. Uh, the Saints are looking Lan pretty good. Airport. I'm probably gonna come around because this is so scenic. Houston, one more score, Philadelphia. Um, this might be. Is this St. the sanctuary area? Or gosh darn it! Like I said, a very interesting day. Well, let's slow down a bit. A whole lot. Control at 224 hours four minutes. We're within uh, five, five and a half minutes of the t start of this TV pass. Apollo 12 is 98,213 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,394 feet per second. On your uh, television monitors in the news center, you may notice uh, a bouquet of roses on the flight director's console. You have to Those consult the map a short time ago while trying not to hit any mountains. From a family in Montreal, Canada. Houston, uh, Yankee. Clipper, Houston, go. We're ready anytime you are. Okay, we're checking out our lines. We'll be right back with you. Of 
I mean, you can sort of see it's sort of hard to say, yes, this is okay, Annapurna right. Peak. Because there's, there's Annapurna South, there's Annapurna 2, Annapurna 3. Because there's all these peaks that are sort of related to each other. Ah, they've turned on the television, well, that's why the audio here. just went louder. They're doing the television broadcast. Well, Houston, uh, you look great, but you're upside down. Uh, Turn us over. Turn your camper over. Uh, better not linger down. around here. We still okay. got a ways to go to Kathmandu. Look like a bunch of bats hanging from the ceiling. On the right side, it's mostly like downward, so you can throttle down a bit. So we're coming back around, though. That's a final route this will do for you. And we're gonna head towards that one airport valley. 12, Houston, uh, stand by a couple seconds here. We're gonna try to uh, flip the picture. Pretty okay. dramatic landscape. that we can't flip it. Okay. About the best we can do is flip black and white, but the color has to stay where it is. Okay, well, let's see what we can do. 12, Houston, uh, we're getting our usual uh, excellent quality picture. So down here we've got this river valley. And I cannot pronounce the name of this river. But you can see a runway there. That's Manang. Or possibly pronounced with a different sort of tone. Okay, I guess we're ready if you're right side up now. Yep, fine, there's a city good. down we there. See all three of you. Or we town. see Al Bean flipping in on the side there. First of all, I'll uh, read you a little statement, and then we'll start off with the questions. The questions that you'll be asked in this news conference have been submitted by a newsman here at the Manned Spacecraft Center, who have been covering the flight. Some of the questions they raise will have been answered in your it's communications. It's one of those places control, where I go like, well, that'd be a heck of a place to live. The questions are being read to you. There's definitely exactly people living as down there, though. The newsman, and in an order of priority specified by them. Yep. <laughs> so here comes question number one. <laughs> if you had this mission to fly over again, or were planning another with your present knowledge, what would you do differently? Uh, this peak to our. And what equipment would you add or modify? Right, I think it's on a too. 7,937 meters. Well, I think we'd work over all the tools and uh, the tool carrier and the bags. I think we'd work over just about all of it. I think it was very good and I think it operated very well. Uh, seeing we'd never been there before and attempted to do that kind of work. Really now bright white right here. I think we can make some improvements on it. Uh, I'll let Al okay. Now we're just going to head to Kathmandu. That is uh, uh, basically our Himalaya yeah. tour this time uh, around. As far as their operation, that both EVs overall, they're looking pretty good. Some seams here and there, but overall, not bad. Okay, Again, we'll have to wait till next time to actually hit Mount Everest. If I had to do over again, I'd have wagered a little more with all those people and said I would never be able to find a lamp on the lunar surface. In fact, if I'd have been that smart, I'd have been about a surveyor also and I'd retire. <laughs> Roger, Dick. Okay, here comes question number two. Was there some confusion about something you said yesterday about the launch into the thundercloud? Would you or would you not consent to launching under those conditions again? I'd go again. We made it this time. Why can't we do it again? <laughs> 
Okay, troops. Question number three. Aside from the lightning, what gave you your most apprehensive moment, if any, either before the lunar landing, during your time on the moon, or afterwards? And if you never had an apprehensive moment, was there ever a time when you may have been a little bit concerned over what was going on? So, down sort of populated areas in Nepal, well, barring those little towns in the midst of the mountains, of course. Of course, the airport is still awful high, and that's going to be important to remember as I try and land. I said earlier that uh, burning off the fuel would leave our landing speed lower, but maybe not so much. Maybe I have to expect a pretty high landing speed still. Question number four is for you. Out there on the moon, you sounded happy, even euphoric. Some people think that maybe you were on an oxygen high. Were you? Were you high, Pete? You Pete Al, Conrad, were you high on the moon? Way to be out there. No, I was very happy, but I wasn't on an oxygen high. I was very happy because all the work that we had uh, put into that EVA, uh, was to get it to pay off, and uh, once we got over the initial stumbling block of, of uh, the uh, one little problem we had getting the fuel cast uh, going, those well, I, sounds I are part of the tape because we were on a timeline. It's for you know. the way we thought it was going to go, and I was just having a ball because it was much easier than all at once. The practice we've done learning how to do that. Yeah, you're asking about. Uh, how it feels. I think for about the first 10 minutes that you're out, at least in my case, you're, uh, you'll find that it's not as hard as you think it's going to be to move around. And you're pretty happy about that, but you could sense that first 10 minutes you still want to be careful and you don't want to overextend yourself. So you're, you're sort of excited trying to get, uh, get up to speed, get your balance in good shape, and get your movements in good shape so you can start doing the work. And uh, once the first 10 minutes is over and you sort of... Uh, realize that you now know how to hold your balance and you now aren't going to fall down and uh, everything is working real well. I think right then you start getting down to the operational part of it and after that you, uh, you just press on and get the job I'm a little bit worried about landing and the way the landing gear tend to wobble on takeoff. So there's the thing. I do remember this was a little bit touchy. On Apollo 11, Next plane will be an Alpha Jet, so sort of the same style, except that's a more definite trainer. You had hammocks and blankets. How did you sleep? And on the subject of sleep, still allow us to maneuver around and look at things. Well, let's take a ball in order. In the first place, we didn't have any blankets. We had the hammocks. I think we can see Kathmandu there. That's the sort of hazy bit in that valley. About a week before the flight, we uh, found a problem on the uh, boom of my backup suit. And all four of our suits were sent back to the factory. And uh, the uh, boots were replaced. And in the process of doing that, the suits had to be re-rigged when, when they came back to the Cape. 
and uh, I had to fit my suit without the uh, liquid cool garment because both the uh, flight ones were already packed and you can't put a non-flight one in a flight suit. And I had the legs got a little bit too tight. So in my hammock that night, I didn't want to take my suit off. It was too dirty in there. And in my hammock, I was very uncomfortable. My shoulders and uh, the suit was pressing on the bottom of my feet and my shoulders. And it uh, sounds funny, but even bending your knees or anything, you can't, you can't get rid of that. If the suit's too short, it's too short. Or it's about a half an inch too short. So I bared with it most of the night, and I only slept maybe four and a half hours, mostly on account of that. And then Al, very kindly, the next morning, let my suit out for me, and uh, which took him about an hour. And uh, so that, that's about how I spent my night. And to answer the dreams, I, I don't dream normally anyhow uh, that I can remember, and I didn't dream there. I didn't, uh, I didn't dream either. And uh, I don't know, I didn't sleep too good on the moon, but not because we were cold or hot, because we weren't. We had uh, both the liquid cool garment on, and we had uh, air running to our suit. That's a and nice so view. Got a little warm, we could either turn on the Pretty water darn water clear water why water Kathmandu water water is where it is. <laughs> Isn't it? So use those two controls, I think Pete and I stayed uh, just about the temperature we wanted to stay. And the hammocks were very comfortable. It's interesting that uh, if you rig them in, uh, on the earth, and they're pretty long, and you say, boy, when you get in that, it's really going to sag. But when you get on the moon, and you only weigh about 30 or 35 pounds, and you get in those hammocks, I was looking at Pete up in his, you don't hardly sag a bit. You just kind of lay there almost horizontal. It's a real comfortable place to sleep. Let's see, air brakes? We do have air brakes. Roger, Alan, you didn't dream either, huh? I didn't dream a bit. I, I uh, woke up and went back to sleep a number of times. Another interesting thing, pe people have worried about the amount of sound in the limb bothered you. It's fairly noisy in there, and there's a couple of pumps that change frequency every once in a while. But all in all, I don't think that was uh, any interest to sleep. Do you, Pete? No. The 16G is nice. It just keeps, uh, it pushes you down enough so that you feel pressure on your back or, where, or your side or wherever you're laying. But, uh, but it's not enough to really uh, give you any pressure points in the suit. I, I think 16G is, is nicer than either 0G to sleep in or 1G to sleep in. It's, it's a good, happy medium. It's pleasant. Okay. Roger, uh, question number six is for Dick Gordon. There's only run runway. Well, I know I last time I came in from the north, and what were you able so to maybe it's the south end that's safe, hopefully. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to turn south and then uh, land on it. This is going to be a pain if it's not level, as if this plane already doesn't have trouble staying balanced. So the airport is right there, to our left. Pretty easy to spot. But at this point, since it's been a long flight, I'm just going to go ahead and try and land it. One trick to landing is uh, all these uh, mountains in the way. You can see in bad weather it would be a pain.
That's about the crash landing, Dick. Did you see it go in? Okay, gear uh, down. No, uh, none of us saw it go in. After we separated, I checked the lab for a considerable length of time in the optics. I think maybe, oh, there it is. And thought I had a pretty good state vector so that the auto optics would track the lab automatically. Therefore, I put the camera on the same camera on the section right here behind me, hoping that it would automatically track the I'm lab. I'm just wondering what speed I should go with. Surface. I don't know whether we were successful with that or not. Uh, I have some doubts about that. Uh, certainly we, none of us saw it with our naked eye. Roger, Dick, thanks. Question number I'll seven. be using plenty of flaps. Uh, you mentioned during the EVA Ooh, finding that, three kinds that of soil. Ooh, drag. Will you give a brief description of each, its color, its texture, and so forth? That level of and flaps had a lot of drag. you had in handling all the different kinds of lunar material. Well, when we say three different kinds of soil yesterday, that was a... Uh, uh, okay, I well, guess what I want to say hopefully is that's going to be all right. The colors were all the same. It, it appeared that... I'm using, like, afterburners right now. ...that other soil, and the manner in which we sunk into it, and the uh, finer soil with the, uh, uh, the softer soil that we sank deeper in with was of a finer grain. This was over uh, towards the very extreme end of our traverse over at this sharp crater, which is about as far away as we could get from the lamp. And uh, now we have sampled uh, in, in the sample bags uh, some of these types of soil. Uh, uh, it feels I mean, really soil, rough. The medium textured one was where we landed on one side of the surveyor crater. Over on the other side, when we went down to get to the surveyor, we found a... Oh, I see the bump in the runway crack. I say considerably more firmer. It appeared to be firmer ground, not quite as... Uh, we didn't sink in quite as much as we did over working around the lamp. Oh, look at that. And oh, God. Oh, God. Crater, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 Okay. Uh, no, you covered it. They asked about the color. Uh, one of the real uh, difficult things about the whole oh, th this is not good at all. the geology part of it was the fact there didn't appear to be any Well, I hate color. Kathmandu Airport. Uh, <laughs> I knew... <laughs> the the, uh, Once I saw that there was only one runway, I realized that I had made a major miscalculation. Um, this plane is also a little bit troublesome to land. I was pulling up pretty hard on the stick there with the flaps and going at 150 knots. I was sorry. I'll, I'll pause the Apollo audio for a sec as I make my excuses. So I'm gonna contend that darn it, that was not my fault. <laughs> I I'm just gonna plug ahead and upload this. I think it was a pretty good flight despite that mess. And yeah. Yep, yep, sorry. But we crashed. Crashed. And I'll let you guys uh, assign blame as you'd like. But I really think that this uh, plane model has a pretty darn high stall speed, or much higher than it ought to. But anyway, I'll leave it there. And we'll pick up uh, next time right there. And we will fly uh, to Calcutta, but we're actually going to detour to Everest. So I'll try and uh, start the audio, audio a little bit back a bit so that we catch those answers to the press questions. Anyway, well, with this de demise, uh, unfortunate demise, our first of the series, but there you are. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.